uh, uh, other types of equilibrium and basically um, how the line intensities can be understood to some degree. So in a normal story of plasma spectroscopy, we understand that a photon that we eventually register on our device is somehow created in plasma, then it may propagate with reabsorption, reemission, which is certainly the subject of opacity and radiation transport that I am not going to touch today. Howard will do this. And then it leaves plasma volume, comes to our experimental device, is somehow registered. Of course, you have some instrumental effects, some photons are lost here and there, but I'll try to talk about what actually happens here, how photons are produced and how they are emitted. So, um, as, as uh, Achim Kunze mentioned on the first day, there are different words that are used to define this particular quantity, which is here is just the energy emitted due, due to a specific transition in, in atom or ion from unit volume per unit time. And here I just define it as product of three quantities. One is the photon energy. Uh, then uh, this is the transition probability or Einstein coefficients. Photon energy, of course, has some energy units. Let's say joule. This one is, uh, uh, has units of inverse second. And the third factor here is the upper state density, or normally we call it just level population. Now, of these three parameters that tell us about line, spectral line intensity in optically thin plasma, uh, the two parameters on the right are almost purely atomic parameters. That is, um, they do depend slightly on plasma properties because both energy and transition probability, as we perfectly understand, uh, Result, for instance, calculation, you take two wave functions and some operator in between. And of course, the wave function, as we understand, can be modified by plasma. But generally, we can more or less safely assume that these two remain constant for very large range of uh, plasma parameters, such as densities. And this is what we'll assume uh, for the future. But the level population is very strongly dependent on what actually goes on in plasma. And this is, will be the focal point of uh, everything that, that follows. Now, before we uh, come to discussion of uh, level populations, let me remind you that uh, atomic processes uh, are characterized by their corresponding rates basically the number of processes per unit time. And of course, we can split them into collisional and radiative or non-radiative, like authorization. Collisional rate uh, is normally defined for a projectile hitting, let's say, our atom and ion and resulting in, in some uh, uh, reaction as, first of all, integral over distribution of velocities or energies for the projectile with some distribution function. For electrons, it's normally Maxwellian, but not necessarily. In many cases, uh, electron energy or velocity distribution of plasma deviates sometimes very strongly from Maxwellian distribution. Of course, then you have the cross section, which is an effective area. And that's why its units are centimeters squared for this particular elementary process. Of course, you need to get into, uh, take into account the velocity because the faster they move, the more collisions we have. And of course, everything depends also on the uh, projectile density, electron density for electrons, and so on and so forth. Uh, the uh, integral itself is called the rate coefficient. It, it has uh, units of centimeter cube per uh, second. The uh, radiative rates certainly have just uh, 
units of inverse centimeter, excuse me, inverse second, and of course the lifetime uh, associated with a particular radiative process is just one over A, and this is something that we will uh, be using later on. Now, another important thing that we certainly should remember before uh, discussing uh, uh, what happens with population distributions and other quantities is the scaling of various atomic parameters. Uh, let's take a look at Z scaling, where Z is the uh, spectroscopic charge. That it, it's ion charge pl plus one. And of course, for very large ion charges, for highly ionized system, they're almost the same. But generally, it's, it's physically more reasonable to use uh, to discuss scalings uh, related to spectroscopic charge. So starting with radiative processes, the transition probability is proportional to the product of the oscillator strands and uh, energy difference uh, squared. For transitions within the same principal quantum numbers, the energies, energy differences normally scale as Z. You remember we had that expansion for non-relativistic system of energies. It starts with Z squared, then Z, 0, Z minus 1. Z squared is responsible for uh, uh, energy differences with delta N uh, larger than uh, 0. But uh, the uh, Z term is responsible for what happens within uh, a principal quantum number. So delta E goes as Z. The oscillator strength can be shown to actually decreases 1 over z. And that's why the transition probability for delta n equals z transition from this formula obviously goes as uh, just z. You go to transitions between different ends, delta e looks like hydrogenic, and therefore it's z squared. We know that for hydrogenic ions, oscillator strengths remain the same. Basically, Z uh, does not depend on Z. And therefore, uh, the radiative transition probability for delta N non equals Z transition shows very strong behavior, Z to the fourth. Now, if we look at how uh, uh, A value changes with uh, 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 the principal quantum number, let's say we consider transition from high N to some lower N, and then we go higher and higher. It drops like 1 over n cube. And if you uh, look at total radiative decays from a principal quantum number within a uh, hydrogenic ion, it still has the same z to the fourth dependence. But the total sum of all possible radiative rates from hydrogenic uh, level decreases even stronger as uh, 1 over n to the uh, 4 and a half. Now, these dependencies are written for uh, electric dipole, typically the strongest transitions in, in atoms. Forbidden transitions are the multiples, which are magnetic dipole, electric quadrupole, magnetic quadrupole, electric octopole, magnetic octopole, and so on and so forth. They even have stronger dependencies than z to the force. And obviously, this means that you go to highly charged ions, and forbidden transitions become stronger and stronger and stronger. And, uh, therefore much easier to see and measure. Now, if we're talking about collisional transitions, for uh, uh, which we have several types, uh, dipole allowed or optically allowed, optically forbidden, spin forbidden, for the strongest of those which are uh, optically allowed and they happen between transitions that can be connected radiatively, the cross-section behaves differently from the A value, and normally it goes like F over delta E squared. Now again, looking at already known dependencies of F delta E on uh, Z, we can figure out that cross-section actually decreases with Z, and again pretty strongly, Z minus uh, uh, cube. The uh, rate coefficients behaves certainly differently. now. V, of course, is the velocity, or in this case, let's say, average velocity of the electrons that come to hit uh, our atom. But to produce 
uh, higher ions. We need certainly electrons with higher energy, and therefore we can kind of assume that V goes approximately as Z, or maybe a little weaker than Z. So the, uh, therefore, the rate coefficient changes maybe slightly a little uh, less strongly with Z than the cross-section. So let's say Z minus squared. For transitions between different ends, cross-section goes as 1 over z to the fourth, the rate coefficient, z minus cube, and cross-sections, collision cross-section, strongly depend on, on principal quantum number. This is a very important point because this simply means that you go to higher ends and you try to figure out uh, how balance between radiative and collisional processes changes you immediately see that going higher, collisions become more and more important. And on the other hand, radiative process become less and less important. And this will uh, uh, change the whole population dynamics for higher ends. OK, um, so starting from uh, the complete thermodynamic equilibrium, this is a situation when all components of our physical systems are in equilibrium, uh, which means that uh, principle of the tape balance is valid here. In other words, each direct process is exactly balanced by its inverse. So if we have excitation by some kind of particle, it's exactly compensated by de excitation by the same part. And the same goes for all other physical processes, such as ionization, its inverse three body recombination, photonization, photo recombination, autonization, the electronic capture. Radiative decay, spontaneous plus stimulated, is compensated by photo excitation. And this was uh, Einstein's uh, uh, logic when he uh, basically defined all these uh, Einstein coefficients in his uh, analysis of radiation in atomic systems. Now, uh, typically in plasma, we have four or maybe you can say three systems. Those are, of course, photons, electrons, atoms, and ions. Thermodynamic equilibrium means that all of them have the same temperature characterized, uh, which is, uh, uh, that is, radiation temperature and electron temperature and ion temperature is the same. And we know, of course, the equilibrium distribution for each of these subsystems. For photons, it's Planck. For electrons, Maxwell. Populations within atoms, ions, are distributed according to Boltzmann exponent formula. Populations between atoms and ions are distributed according to uh, Saha equations. Now, it's um, generally uh, useful to have this energy scheme in mind when you consider all these physical processes. So let's say this is our atomic system, and we have a number of bound states. And then, of course, the ionization potential for an ion, and then we have continuum state with, let's say, positive energy. So this is the energy scale. Basically, all these distributions and all these uh, processes are related to electron movements within subsystems of this energy scheme. That is, Boltzmann, of course, corresponds to what happens here between bound states, the formula is very well known, of course. I'm not going to discuss it. Uh, Saha simply corresponds to a situation when electron goes between bound and continuum states. And of course, Maxwell distribution describes what happens in the continuum. So all these parts of uh, thermodynamic equilibrium, Maxwell, Saha, and Boltzmann, correspond simply to uh, processes that happen within the same unified energy scale, simply we're talking differently, but bound, bound free and free free, so to say, transition for electrons, not for, not for photons. Now, talking about photons, of course, we very well know how uh, the Planck distribution looks like, and uh, probably the, uh, the easiest object to uh, see Planck distribution with photon is our sun. So what you see here uh, is two uh, curves. The gray one is the black body spectrum for 
the temperature of 5,777 Kelvin, and the yellow is the extraterrestrial solar spectrum irradiance, which looks very much like uh, a black body. And certainly we know that uh, uh, sun uh, gives us more or less uh, close to, to perfect black body spectrum. Maxwellian is also known. It's, it's rather common in, in real calculation to move from velocity representation to the energy representation. And of course, when you take into account uh, the velocity in the rate coefficient, you remember it's V times sigma uh, 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 times cross-section. And when you move to uh, energy representation, it becomes square root of E times Maxwellian distribution for energy. It's uh, also useful to remember that actually this parameter peaks at the electron temperature. And therefore, this is where we have the largest number of electrons for a particular Maxwellian. Here's temperature 200 eV. And this is where most of the reaction actually happens because you have the largest number of electrons here. OK, uh, Saha distribution. As I said before, Saha corresponds to station when electron moves between bound and continuum state. So uh, of course, for instance, uh, uh, most common physical processes that are associated with establishment of Saha distribution are ionization and three-body recombination, which corresponds to this formula with parentheses dropped. But also, you can consider uh, another pair of processes, that is, autonization and electronic capture. You heard it yesterday about autonization from uh, Stefan Fritsch, uh, and electronic capture is just the inverse process when electron approaches a charged ion and get captures coming, captured uh, coming to some relatively higher orbit, and one of the atomic electron is excited. So the loss of energy here is exactly compensated by increase of energy uh, by the bound electron. Therefore, energy conserves. The formula for uh, Saha distribution, that is, uh, in this particular case, the ratio of total populations for the next ion, z plus 1, to the ion with charge z is of course, the ratio of total uh, partition functions, which are defined as sum of statistical weight with exponents. Here, of course, you have some factors that are uh, related to uh, the continuum characteristics. Of course, electron temperature must be sitting there. You have the standard Boltzmann factor of ionization potential over temperature. And importantly, you have this factor, 1 over uh, electron density. And this factor is certainly important what, because uh, if you have a Saha distribution and uh, your electron density increases with all other parameters uh, kept constant, you see that basically it results in increased recombination. And it goes up, you have more and more ions with charge Z as compared to charge Z plus 1. So uh, in, in many plasmas which are not uh, uh, in Saha equilibrium, the situation is opposite. You, you increase uh, density, and, and uh, your ionization actually increases. But in Saha, it's, it's the other way. And you can certainly understand it from, for instance, comparing ionization and three-body recombination. Electron impact ionization is, of course, proportional to the first power of electron density. You have just one electron coming in and uh, kicking another one uh, uh, out. But in three-body recombination, you have two electrons coming close to your atom. And therefore, the probability or rate for this process is proportional to electron density squared. So you increase the dens density. This is first power, this is second. Recombination becomes stronger. Organization balance shifts to uh, uh, lower organization uh, stages. Now, um, one of the um, primary questions that 
uh, we normally want to ask is which ion is the most abundant under this particular uh, conditions in plasma. In other case, let's say we have situation when this ion with char Z and Z plus one have about the same populations. Of course, the others will be going down. It simply follows from all these Saha formulas. It turns out that for uh, Saha equilibrium, uh, typically this happens when uh, electron temperature is much smaller, well, much, maybe a factor of five or even a little higher, smaller than the ionization potential of this particular uh, ion. And we'll see some examples that this is really the case. Now, um, so the complete thermal or uh, uh, thermodynamic equilibrium is reached when we have complete balance between photons, electrons, and let's say ions. And uh, this situation almost never happened. Well, there are some indication that there may be complete thermodynamic equilibrium in the interiors of white dwarfs. But uh, on, on, uh, on our planet, in terrestrial conditions, this is not the case, and the reason is that photons decouple easily. They easily escape. They very weakly interact with, with uh, uh, other particles. And therefore, a uh, more common situation is that photons are becoming completely separate part, and the plasma is characterized with, with the rest of uh, uh, our particles, electrons, and ions. And this situation is called local thermodynamic equilibrium, which simply means that uh, our uh, matter, photons are the field, but uh, electrons and, and ions are matter. Uh, distribution here follows Saha between ions, Boltzmann for bound state within ion, and Maxwell, of course, for electrons. Now, uh, the typical, now, if photons decouple, this basically means that radiation effects are much smaller than particle. And certainly, you can think that this would happen when density of electrons is much higher. Uh, and therefore, collision rates are much stronger than um, radiative rates. And there are uh, conditions derived by uh, different uh, scientists. Uh, they uh, may differ a little bit, but um, this criteria basically describes what density uh, corresponds to a situation when you have Boltzmann distribution established within your ion, for instance. And uh, Hans Green derived this condition long, long ago uh, assuming that collision rates are at least a factor of magnitude, a uh, factor of 10, order of magnitude stronger than radiative rates. So if you uh, consider something like hydrogenic ion and look at the most, uh, at the strongest radiating transition, which is between the, which is the resonance line between the first excited level to the ground, and then carefully write down formulas for A value, for collision rates. You can uh, derive it yourself that uh, you need pretty high densities, which follows from this formula, to reach Boltzmann distribution. So for instance, if we're talking about neutral uh, hydrogen and uh, electron temperature, which enters here, is 2 EV, you need uh, electron densities on the order of 10 to the 17 or higher in order to provide Boltzmann distribution of population within your, uh, between your atomic states. You go to a little uh, higher ions. So for instance, we're talking about carbon-5, which is four times ionized carbon with typical temperature of 80 electron volts. In this case, the density increases by five orders of magnitude. So you just ionize your matter a little bit, and to reach Boltzmann distribution, you really need higher and higher density. And uh, you see that uh, this density changes very strongly, let's z to the seventh. Saha criterion shows about the same dependence on z. Again, 
just from these formulas, it follows that for hydrogen, you need 10 to the 17. For carbon, 5, 3, 10 to the 21. To get the bottom line here is to get LT, you really need higher densities, especially for charged ion and especially for highly charged ion. You, again, you, for neutrals, 10 to the 17, four times ionized, 10 to the 22, you go another order of magnitude for your charge from 4 to 40, and it goes through the roof, becomes exceedingly high. Now, uh, what's good about uh, local thermodynamic uh, equilibrium regarding calculation of line intensities? Good point is that we need practically no atomic data, well, only energies, statistical weights, uh, to calculate the populations. We just take the Boltzmann formula, and this is what's done. Now, from here, it follows that the intensity ratio of two lines is a very nice uh, function of temperature only. And therefore, if our plasma is an LTE, which means uh, dense plasma, we can get uh, electron temperature just looking at the ratios of two lines. Or you can take more than two lines and plot intensities of several measured lines uh, on a plot that is normally called Boltzmann plot. So basically, since our intensity is product of population, transition probability, and energy, which goes like ratio of statistical weight to partition function, A, E, and exponent, if you take log of this ratio, it becomes a linear function of the level energy, and just looking at the slope, you can easily derive the temperature. So this is an example from one of the recent papers, and there are many papers that use this technique. Guys measured, uh, I think that was, um, I think, Neon. Uh, several lines took this ratio log, and here you have nice uh, uh, linear distribution that immediately tells you that the temperature in this particular case is 14 and a half uh, thousand uh, kelvins with a relatively small error of plus minus 3 kelvin, 300 kelvins only. So uh, if we look back at what happens with uh, uh, Saha LT, uh, again, we can reach Saha LT condition when collisions are much stronger than radiative properties. Saha is established between ions, both from within ions. And since collisions, again, decrease with Z, you remember, cross-section goes 1 over Z to the fourth, and radiative process increase with Z, it means that high and high densities are needed for ions to reach Saha LT conditions. Now, um, can we find some tools to easily calculate uh, Saha LT spectra? Yes, we have such a tool at our uh, database. Let me show you an example. So again, you go to the uh, NIST atomic spectra database line form that, that we saw uh, uh, on Monday. I was talking about Grotian diagrams, other criteria, but here's this little part on the left that is called dynamic plots. These are plots that you can generate, and Saha LT spectrum is one of them. Now, again, to generate Saha LT spectrum, you need only energies, statistical weights, which are 2j plus 1, and transition probabilities. And this is exactly what we have in, in the database. We do not have cross-sections, because from the beginning, the NIST atomic spectrum database was about spectroscopy, not collisions. But this is enough to get some spectrum. So let's take a look. Uh, uh, carbon, OK, let's, let's start from, from scratch. So let's take something like iron. Uh, first five uh, ionization stages, and let's take a uh, range of equivalents from 300 to 500 nanometers. Of course, we need not too high temperature. OK, we select Sahel T spectrum. We need not too high temperature to really have 
designs most abundant. So let's take I don't know, maybe three electron volts. Uh, the density uh, 10 to the 20 should be all right. If we want to build not spectrum as, as simple bars, but uh, uh, widened profiles, we can use this option for Doppler broadened spectrum. But here we should put a relatively high ion temperature, let's say 200,000. Uh, 20,000 electron volts, so the profiles are really wide. Okay, let's see what we get now. Uh, iron has quite a few lines, so it takes a little while to get the data. So you see it shows that we have uh, 2,057 lines, and of course you need lines that have information about uh, uh, transition probabilities, otherwise you will get no results. And here at the bottom, at the end of this long output table, you see different options for the plots. So if we look at the PNG file, you see the Saha LT generated spectrum. In addition, here on the right, you see the calculated distribution of population over ionization stages. So at this particular density and this particular temperature, uh, iron 2 is the most populated. Iron 3 has 26% of the total population, so on and so forth. And uh, you, can, you can look at the spectra and use them if your plasma is really dense and close to uh, Saha LT condition. OK. So um, let's move on. Now, uh, when when can we expect deviations from Saha LTE? One is obvious. We already were talking about the densities. We really want density to be pretty high to reach Saha LTE. But you remember that uh, Saha LTE basically corresponds to the situation when, when you have equilibration between direct and inverse process. And if our plasma is non-Maxwellian, that is, you have let's say, uh, bulk of electrons have Maxwellian distribution, but you may have some hot tails or hot electrons, then the, the distribution of electrons is non-equilibrium. And therefore, the distribution of populations in your atoms ions becomes non-equilibrium as well. So you have uh, deviation from LT non-Maxwellian plasmas. In, if you have unbalanced processes, you, if you have anisotropy in your plasmas, external fields, so all these things result in various types of deviation from uh, SAH LT. So SAH LT is high density. What happens at the other uh, 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 side of, of densities? The other limiting case is, of course, the coronal equilibrium that um, corresponds to low electron densities. Of course, the name comes from the studies of solar corona. And if by any chance you are in the United States on uh, August 21, uh, you have a chance to see the total solar, solar eclipse. Uh, the timing is certainly very good. It will happen around 1 PM. The shadow of the moon will enter the west coast, I think, around Oregon, and then crosses the whole country. Uh, the peak uh, of uh, the eclipse will happen around Tennessee, Kentucky. It's not too long, only 2 minutes and 40 seconds at the peak, but still it's very worthwhile uh, seeing. OK, so uh, what's the difference uh, between coronal model and SAR LT approach? In coronal model, we uh, think that the electron density is so low that the collisions happen very rarely. And Therefore, excitations and ionization only happen from the ground state. So if this is the scheme of energy level in a particular ion, and solid lines show you possible, all possible uh, collisional excitation or de-excitation, we, let's say, neglect everything except for direct excitation from the ground state. And sometimes you also include metastable state that the 
pretty well populated in uh, atoms and ions. Uh, we remember that radiative properties do not depend on the electron density, and collisional processes go as Ne or N squared. And of course, if your density is very small, then collisional properties, co collisional process become less and less probable than the radiative one. Now, because collisions are indeed important here in a sense that this is the real uh, uh, way to move electron from the ground state to excited states, coronal model does in require a complete set of collisional cross-sections. And this is the difference from Saha LT, where we don't need cross-section. We need just Boltzmann formula, and that's it. Now, generally speaking, here we only need uh, excitations, and we can neglect the excitation. But in general case, do we have to calculate separately excitation processes and the excitation? And the answer is no. If we know uh, excitation, we can immediately derive the excitation. And this uh, derivation of connection between these two types of cross-sections uh, can be illustrated by the principle of detail balance. So let's say we have a two-level system, excitation, de-excitation, and in equilibrium, what comes up is exactly equilibrated, but what comes down. So we neglect all radiation just for illustration of uh, 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 this connection between excitation and de-excitation. In thermodynamic equilibrium, these two levels are connected by Boltzmann formula of their populations. And therefore, substituting Nj and Ni in here, we get connection between rate coefficients for excitation and de-excitation. They're just connected with the uh, exponent. Now, each rate coefficient is an integral over Maxwellian distribution. The difference is that for excitation, we have uh, excitation threshold. And therefore, the integral starts from uh, the threshold, delta E. For de-excitation, electron with any energy as, as, as small as it can only be can approach the atom. Atomic electron goes down, gives the excess of energy to the uh, passing by electron. Therefore, here the integral starts from zero. We can do substitution of the integration variable uh, in this form so that finally we have connection between excitation and de-excitation cross-section in this formula. And this should be valid for any value of temperature. There was no real indication what kind of temperature it is in, in, in this derivation, which means that the integrants must be uh, equal also. And therefore, finally, we come to this very nice connection between excitation and de-excitation cross-section. And therefore, it means that if we have excitation, we can immediately determine de-excitation cross-section or even rates if we rate coefficient if we need uh, them to be calculated. Now, what happens with line intensities on the collisional uh, coronal equilibrium? Uh, again, we can rather easily calculate uh, the intensity for two-level system. In the balance uh, uh, equation, what comes from the, let's say, ground state to the excited level. And this is population of the ground state times uh, rate, times excitation rate, is exactly equilibrated by the radiative decay from the upper level, which would be its population times radiative uh, rate. From here, it follows, first of all, that the population of the upper level is proportional to electron density. And because coronal equilibrium is characterized by low density, it means that the populations of excited states in corona are typically very, very small. You remember in, in, in Boltzmann, you just have delta E over T, and T can be different, which means that the difference between, uh, let's say, ground state and first excited is not that small. But here we have basically 
very small factor, electron density, which tells us that if we look at the total population of an ion, it's really only the ground state and the coronal equilibrium that has any substantial population. All other levels have very small population. But from here, uh, even more important uh, conclusion follows. Now, the intensity of a line is a product of level of population, radiative, transition probability, and energy. And this two factors are exactly what we have here. Therefore, we can just substitute them with ground state population and excitation. Basically, this formula tells you that under coronal equilibrium, the intensities of spectral lines actually do not depend on transition, on radiated transition probabilities. And this, this sounds quite natural. So let's say we have two levels, and collisions happen very rarely because the electron density is low. So electron goes from the ground state to the upper level, and then the next collision will happen Nobody knows when, in very large time. So therefore, this long, long time between collision is actually larger than the typical radiative lifetime. So the electron will always have a chance to, uh, to uh, drop down and emit a photon. Therefore, practically for each collisional excitation, we will have one photon. And therefore, the number of photons, which actually is the intensity, is directly related to uh, the number of collisions. Now, this is, of course, simplified uh, scheme of just two levels. If we have more than one possible radiative transition from the upper level, of course, we have to take them into account. At the end, we have a branching ratio entering the intensity of each particular line from the upper level, but the idea basically is the same. It's really the collisions that uh, are important for uh, determination of line intensities uh, and the coronal equilibrium. Uh, now, in Saha, LT, the most abundant ion, uh, uh, is produced when temperature is significantly lower than ionization potential. For coronal equilibrium, low densities, the ratio is, is less, uh, uh, it, the ratio is, is smaller, so you need temperatures that are typically factor of three only smaller than the ionization potential. And uh, this condition is actually valid for uh, light and medium uh, uh, elements in the periodic system, like nuclear charts, let's say, smaller than 30. Probably we'll have a chance to look what happens at higher, Z, higher Zs. But for astrophysical purposes, at least from where the coronal equilibrium comes, this ratio is, is generally quite valid. Now, the ionization balance in coronal equilibrium does not depend on electron density. You remember again, in Saha we had this factor 1 over Ne. Density increases. We have more and more recombination shift ionization balance to lower ionization stage. This is not the case in corona. Why? The main processes that establish ionization balance in coronal equilibrium are electron impact ionization, which is proportional to electron density, and photorecombination and dielectronic recombination, both of which are also proportional to the electron density. The three-body recombination, which generally is present here, is proportional to n e squared. And because n e is small, we can completely neglect it for coronal equilibrium. And of course, n e simply cancels out and therefore, the ratio of population between two, two uh, neighboring ions and also the total ionization distribution becomes completely independent on electron density. Now, we already know what happens uh, for Saha at high density. So let's say uh, we're looking at the log of the ratio of population between two ions, Z plus 1 and Z. Uh, again, the ionization proceeds mainly through electron impact. We have both photorecombination, uh, uh, photorecombination, dielectronic combination, three-body 
recombination pushing uh, balance to uh, low Z. We, we remember that Saha has 1 over n e dependence at higher electron densities. Corona gives us constant ratio at low density. The question is what happens in between? Well, certainly you would at first think that, OK, these two curves are connected by smooth uh, curve here. But this is not really the case. Actually, when you increase density moving from coronal condition to higher uh, electron densities, uh, first you produce more ionization. And this happens simply because the excited states become more and more populated. You remember in corona, the population of each excited state is proportional to electron density. And of course, it's negligible if density is very small. And therefore, if we consider ionization in corona, it's only direct ionization from the ground state, maybe metastable that contributes. But density increases, your excited states become more and more populated, and suddenly they start contributing to ionization, in particular because the ionization potential from those states is much smaller than ionization potential from the ground state. And therefore, cross sections are higher, therefore, rate coefficients of the rate are higher, and therefore, there is always range of uh, electron densities where excited state become contributing to ionization. And then, of course, at the end, at higher densities, you reach Saha condition, and the whole ionization balance changes to typical uh, Saha behavior. OK, we have a few more minutes before the break, so um, let's, let's discuss a few more things. Now, um, we already learned that radiative processes and collisional processes depend differently within uh, uh, within an ion. Radiation transition probabilities uh, drop when we go higher in n, typically it's 1 over n cubed. And on the other hand, collisions become stronger and stronger when we move high in n. Again, this is a bound state, continuum. So if we even start from coronal conditions when radiative processes are much stronger than collisional, for lower, and for, for lower uh, bound state, moving up in this tower of atomic states, we will definitely reach situation when collisions become as strong as radiation, and then collision will become much stronger than radiation. This simply means that in any plasma, if you go, if you go sufficiently high in principal quantum numbers, you will reach situation when distribution of population between this level switches from corona to LTE, that is, to Boltzmann. Now, where it actually happens depends on several factors. Of course, it depends on uh, electron density, because you always have uh, uh, electron density uh, factor for collisions. It depends on ion uh, uh, charge. It very weakly depends on uh, electron temperature, because certainly uh, the main collisional transition that establish Boltzmann distribution here a transition between neighboring uh, uh, levels. And for them, energy difference is much smaller than, than uh, electron temperature. So uh, you can, for instance, use this formula. Again, there are certain, uh, several different formulas that try to describe transition from coronal distribution for lower bound states to partial LT, P means partial here. For higher bound state, this is one of the formulas also derived by Grimm. And uh, you see that the dependencies on, on temp dependence on temperature is really weak. It's 1 over 17 um, power for, for uh, electron density, for, excuse me, for electron temperature. For density, it's just slightly higher. But still, you can use it to see. But the bottom line here is that there's always part in your uh, uh, atom ion that will be in LTE, and those are the higher levels. OK, uh, it's exactly 950, and probably this is a good 
uh, 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 place to stop for a 10-minute break, and we will continue with collision radiated model after that.